now role of the state in industrial relations in india okay so there are six forms of roles or six states six forms or six states what are these forms what are these six forms let us see first is laissez faire laissez faire okay laissez faire means no state intervention so this kind of approach was there in the 19th century in the 19th century the management and the workers they were left free so workers and management they were left alone workers and the management they were left alone for the purpose of negotiation for the purpose of maintaining the industrial relations so this is laissez faire policy after the laissez faire policy as we discussed in the hrm model robert owen robert owen and later elton mayo they raised the voice of the workers they talked about the concerns at the human uh, workplace so the point that the relations the industrial relations situation is not good in the sense that working condition of the people is not good at the workplace so this point was raised by robert owen the thinkers like robert owen from this time that is by the 19th century the they took the shape of paternalism so from laissez faire policy we move to the paternalism from laissez faire we move to the paternalism okay from laissez faire we move to the paternalism then from 1929 to 31 there was a royal commission on labor royal commission on labor was appointed to look after the condition of the workers then 1950s tripartitism model came in the tripartitism model we have two uh, tripartite bodies indian labor conference and standing labor conference ilc and standing labor conference that is slc okay so it basically provide the platform th for the three important players these players are the management the worker and the government so these three bodies will come together and they will lay down the rules of the working okay they will lay down the rules of the working they will negotiate on the important terms they will negotiate negotiate on the important terms okay so please quickly make the short notes okay quickly make the short notes that will help you revise later very fastly i have written by my hand so that you can also copy it very fast okay and once it is done then let me know then i will proceed i am waiting for you to write that is why i am not in front of the board Okay, once it is done, please let me know. Confirm me that it is done. Okay, very good. Copied. Others. Other people, are you doing? Yes, no. Please reply something. I am waiting for your response.
ओके वेरी गुड आई होप यू आर राइटिंग है ना यू आर राइटिंग बिकॉज दैट इज द पर्पज दैट वे यू विल रिमेंबर अदरवाइज इफ यू जस्ट थिंक दैट सर गिव द पी पी टी एंड वी विल मैनेज आर सेल्फ इन दैट मैनर यू विल नॉट बी एबल टू रिमेंबर गेटिंग द पॉइंट सो रिमेंबरिंग इज मोर इम्पोर्टेंट दैन जस्ट गेटिंग द पी पी टी पी पी टी तो आपको मिल जाएगा पी पी टी से बट आपको रिमेंबर करना होगा राइट दैट इज द पॉइंट नाउ देन केम द नाइनटीन फिफ्टी इन नाइनटीन फिफ्टी वी ऑलरेडी नो द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ इंडिया केम तो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ इंडिया केम एंड वी इंट्रोड्यूस्ड लीगल कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल फ्रेमवर्क वी इंट्रोड्यूस्ड लीगल कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल फ्रेमवर्क ओके इन द लीगल कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल फ्रेमवर्क वी गेव द फंडामेंटल लाइट्स सो देर आर सर्टन फंडामेंटल लाइट्स विच आर बेसिकली कंड्यूसिव टू द इंडस्ट्रियल रिलेशन लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल फ्रीडम ऑफ एक्सप्रेशन आर्टिकल नाइनटीन फ्रीडम ऑफ एसोसिएशन आर्टिकल नाइनटीन सो दे अलाउ the group of worker to express their opinion they allow the group of worker to express as an association to form to constitute to get together as an association okay so freedom of expression article 19 and freedom of association article 19 then prohibition of forced labor article 23 prohibition of forced labor article 23 what is this basically that no person can be forced into the forced labor forced labor concept has been removed article 23 then there is article uh, you know these are the three important fundamental rights apart from this we have multiple dpsp importantly for example article 43a okay and let us see few more important constitutional provisions dpsp which are relevant for the industrial relations dpsps which are relevant for the industrial relations okay so first of all we should understand that labor is a concurrent subject labor is a concurrent subject that means both state and union can legislate upon this so both state and the legislature they can legislate on these matters okay so accordingly there are many central laws and there are many state level laws which are there in india okay now coming to the dpsp so article 39 article 39 basically this lays down that state shall ensure equal pay for equal work the principle of equal pay for equal work has been emphasized by article 39 both for men and women article 39 the principle of equal pay for equal work both for men and women okay this comes from the philosophy of socialism this comes from the socialism idea of the constitution of india so in the constitution of india we have the idea of socialism this idea gives rise to the equal pay for equal work both for the man and woman right both for the men and women after this okay are you copying this are you writing it everyone are you writing it should i move to the next slide
दे कैन बी डायरेक्टली एम सी क्यू फ्रॉम ईच ऑफ द डिस्कशन दैट आई एम डूइंग आई एम डूइंग लॉट ऑफ फैक्चुअल डिस्कशन सो देर कैन बी डायरेक्ट क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम दिस एरिया ओके सो यू शुड कीप मेकिंग द नोट्स देन आर्टिकल फोर्टी वन आर्टिकल फोर्टी वन सो आर्टिकल फोर्टी वन लेस डाउन द प्रोविजन दैट स्टेट shall within the limits of economic within the limits of its economic capacity and development state shall within the limits of its economic capacity and development make effective provision for make effective provision for see basically i you know you should keep making the notes because that increases the retention our purpose is not just to complete the syllabus somehow our purpose is also to retain the things right that, that is the reason why i am writing on the board and you should also write on the notes should also keep making the notes okay make effective provision for securing the right to work right to education right right to public assistance right to work right to education right to public assistance in cases of unemployment right to public assistance in cases of unemployment old age sickness disablement etc so here important provisions are the right to work okay and right to public assistance in case of unemployment okay so these two points are more important here the right to work okay and that has been given through various provisions for example mg narega and the right to public assistance in case of unemployment old age sickness disablement etc okay so this is the article number 41 this is article number 41 after this comes the article 42 okay article 42 talks about the just and human conditions of work and for maternity bed relief so that means the uh, working condition should be good article 42 says working condition should be good just and the human conditions of work and the concept of maternity relief the concept of maternity relief these are the two important aspect here okay so please quickly write it i am waiting for your response आर्टिकल फोर्टी टू आर्टिकल फोर्टी टू द स्टेट टू मेक प्रोविजन फॉर state to make provision for securing just and human conditions of work just and human conditions of work and for maternity relief okay so conditions of work that is the workplace conditions and for
maternity relief and for maternity relief okay article 43 what is article 43 article 43 talks about state to make suitable legislations suitable legislation okay suitable so legislation or economic organization suitable legislation or any economic organization or organizations any economic organization or organizations or in any other manner or in any other manner to all its workers okay to all its workers if you want i will also share the ppt with you don't problem to all its workers agricultural or industrial or otherwise okay all its workers means agricultural industrial or otherwise or in any other manner to all its workers that can be agricultural industrial or otherwise comma work comma a living wage work provide karna hai and we have to provide living wage conditions of work comma conditions of work conditions of work ensuring decent conditions of work ensuring decent standard of life conditions of work ensuring decent standard of of life and full enjoyment of all opportunities full enjoyment of all opportunities okay so article 42 talks about the just and human working conditions maternity leave article 43 talks about that we should provide the work the living wage the conditions of work ensuring decent standard of life and full employment to the full enjoyment to the people so these are the provisions which you have to understand these are the dpsp provisions the relevant dpsp provisions which you should understand okay so article 42 article 43 then we have seen article 41 the right to work and all then dpsp article 39 regarding equal pay for equal both men and women then we have the labor is a concurrent subject okay already we have seen the fundamental rights uh, article 19 article 23 and dpsp one more dpsp is there that is a article 43a which talks about workers participation in management article 43 happens to be very important article high probability that question will come from this area article 43a high probability that question will come from this area workers participation in management right okay so let us come back now let us see let us come back the role of state so we were discussing the role of state okay so role of state first is less is fair no intervention of any uh, state in any matter there is no intervention of state in any matter second is paternalism by uh you know 19th century with the help of robert owen then tripartism indian labor conference standing labor committee right so we have less is fair policy paternalism and tripartism right less is fair paternalism and tripartism then we have uh, constitution of india the fundamental rights and the dpsp right 
Then fifth role is the interventionist role. We know that this is the interventionist role. In the interventionist role, the, the state is actually working through various legislations. So we have various legislations in place, which are already being discussed in the labor law. Okay. So in the labor law classes, you are already, uh, and, uh, you know, already reading and understanding these uh, laws. So these laws are the Trade Union Act, the Industrial Disputes Act, the Minim Minimum Wages Act, EPF Act, Payment of Bonus, and many other laws. So thus, here, the state is working as a body to uh, register, to ensure that all the uh, principles of these laws are being followed up, to ensure that all the DPSV, DPSPs are being implemented in the correct manner, to ensure that workers have all the right, and there is a proper system, there is a grievance redressal, disputes, if any, they are resolved in a proper manner, calculation of wages, calculation of payment, calculation of any amount that is taken care of, social security is there, okay? So good working conditions, social security, good industrial relations, uh, right amount of remuneration, all these things are taken care by the labor laws. And then we are also uh, came up with the latest codes, which have subsumed a lot of labor laws. But because these labor laws are still in the transition phase, so we will read old labor laws and still in the exam they will ask the questions from the old labor laws. The new labor laws will be asked very, very rarely. Okay. So this is the interventionist role. After the interventionist role, we have the next role as the employer. So a state is also working as an employer. A state jo hai, wo ek employer ki bhi kaam karta hai. Okay. So in the role of as an employer, they are providing the good working conditions and the good remuneration to the employees of PSU. So public sector undertaking ki jo, uh, entities hain, unke liye they are providing good uh, remuneration and good working conditions. Okay, And also it happens to be the largest employer. It happens to be the largest employer. Ye kya hai? Aapka largest employer hai, right? So in addition to above, the government also provides various institutional platforms. For example, Labor Bureau in Shimla, National Labor Institute like in the NLI Noida. And apart from this, Again, there are many other various labor beneficial platforms. There are again various labor beneficial platforms, labor administration agencies, which are there for the employees. Okay. So please write few of these bodies. Labor administration machinery. Please write the labor administration machinery. Please write labor administration machinery. Okay, so let us see the labor administration machinery in India. Mm, okay, let me write it on the board. Labor Administration Machinery in India. And this is the important topic because this is having a lot of facts. EPFO ke liye both important hai. APFC ke liye both important hai, right? So first of all, there is a Ministry of Labor and Employment. And under this Ministry of Labor and Unemplo uh, sorry, Employment, there are four attached offices. There are Ministry of Labor and Employment, there are four attached offices. Okay, what are these four attached offices? First is the Office of Directorate General of Employment and Training. Office of Directorate General of Employment and Training, and this is in New Delhi. Directorate of Employment and Training, and this is in New Delhi. 
देन वी हैव ऑफिस ऑफ चीफ लेबर कमिश्नर ऑफिस ऑफ चीफ लेबर कमिश्नर ऑफिस ऑफ चीफ लेबर कमिश्नर अगेन न्यू डेली सो दे कैन आस्क द लोकेशन ऑल्सो एंड दे कैन आस्क इज दिस ए अटैच ऑफिस ऑफ नॉट सो ऑफिस ऑफ डी जी ऑफ एम्प्लॉयमेंट एंड ट्रेनिंग ऑफिस ऑफ चीफ लेबर कमिश्नर देन वी हैव लेबर ब्यूरो लेबर ब्यूरो इट इज इन शिमला ऑल्सो इन चंडीगढ़ शिमला एंड चंडीगढ़ बोथ द प्लेसेस देन वी हैव डायरेक्टरेट जनरल ऑफ फैक्ट्री एडवाइस सर्विस एंड लेबर इंस्टीट्यूट डायरेक्टरेट जनरल ऑफ डायरेक्टरेट जनरल ऑफ फैक्ट्री एडवाइस सर्विस डायरेक्टरेट जनरल ऑफ फैक्ट्री एडवाइस सर्विस एंड लेबर इंस्टीट्यूट मुंबई ओके सो ब्यूरो हो गया एंड दिस इज फैक्ट्री एडवाइस सर्विस ओके एंड दिस इज दैट जनरल ऑफ एम्प्लॉयमेंट एंड ट्रेनिंग एंड दिस इज द कमिश्नर ओके सो यू कैन रिमेंबर लाइक दिस ओके यू कैन रिमेंबर लाइक दिस ओ ओके आई थिंक नाउ इट इज विजिबल सॉरी फॉर द इंटरप्शन प्लीज सी ऑल ऑफ दिस so there are four attached offices office of director general of employment and training new delhi office of chief labor commissioner new delhi labor bureau shimla and chandigarh directorate general of factory advice service and labor institutes mumbai after this we have uh the subordinate offices okay quickly copy this then i will move to next one If you want, I can provide the PPT also. You can study later so that we can increase the speed of the class. So, what will you recommend? I can share the relevant pages to you. These pages to you later. Okay. next after this we have the okay i will provide don't worry okay so that we can increase the speed i will provide it don't worry now we have the subordinate offices we have the subordinate offices so what is the role of these subordinate offices and name so first is the Directorate General of Mine Safety, Ahmedabad. Directorate General of Mines Safety. This is in Dhanbad. Directorate General of Mine Safety, Dhanbad. Okay, and then there are various offices of welfare commissions in India. offices of welfare commissions in india okay 
welfare commissions so what are the offices let us see offices of welfare commissions in india so we have employees state insurance corporation esic employees state insurance corporation employees state insurance corporation then we have employee provident fund organization epfo all these are the subordinate offices employees provident fund organization then we have vv giri national labor institute vv giri national labor institute and then we have central board of workers education central board of workers education so what is the difference between the attached office and subordinate office what is the difference between the attached office and the subordinate office so attached office basically attached office are generally responsible for executive direction and they are most of the technical department okay so let us see the difference between the attached offices and subordinate office attached office and subordinate office S attached offices they are basically for providing the executive direction they are for the executive direction with respect to policy implementation by the department okay so department policy execution karne mein kya direction follow karega what are the executive directions these are given by the attached office and they act as a repository of technical information they act as a repository of technical information or repository of technical information okay and technical advice they basically give the advice on technical matters so basically they are kind of staff agencies or advisory agencies so in management there is a concept that any authority or any uh, agency can be of two type either it can be a staff agency or it can be line authority okay so these subordinate offices are the line authority or implementing authority attached offices are the advisory bodies okay attached offices are the advisory bodies attached offices are the advisory bodies and subordinate offices are the implementation bodies 
okay subordinate offices are the implementation board these they are working in the field or at in a decentralized manner working in the field or in the decentralized manner they are basically responsible for detailed execution of policies or programs of the department detailed execution of the policies or programs of the department okay they function under the direction of they function under the direction of attached offices okay they function under the direction of attached offices okay everyone so this is the difference between the two bodies this is the difference between the attached and the subordinate bodies attached and the subordinate bodies okay attached bodies are the staff agency and subordinate are the line or implementing agency okay so we have already seen the attached offices are field of directorate general of employment and training office of chief labor commissioner labor bureau and director general of factory advice service and labor institutes then subordinate offices are director general of mines and safety mine safety then we have esic epfo vv giri national labor institute and central board of workers education okay so this epfo ke liye aap prepare kar rahe hain that happens to be one of the subordinate office of the ministry of labor so epfo you know this question they can ask also ask in the interview dekhiye one more thing i want to tell you all the discussion that we are doing why should you take very high import uh, very high uh, interest in the subject like this that we are studying okay interview mein if you see the importance of these subjects in the interview so in interview you you will have like if you see the civil services interview the civil services interview is a journalist interview it is a journalist interview means they will ask you about general idea about various issues like education health or why you will be going to become ias or something right but here if you talk about apfc or epfo in case of epfc and epfo this is a specialized interview this is a specialized interview okay so what is the meaning of specialized interview what is the meaning of specialized interview that what is the meaning of specialized interview is that they will ask you the technical questions on those matters which are important for job profile they will ask you the technical questions on those matters which are important for the job profile so if you see the syllabus three areas happens to be the most important in the job profile one is the industrial relations second is the labor laws and third is the accounting dekhiye other areas like aptitude english polity economy economy bhi they can ask you because economy is also the relevant domain 
But if you see the previous toppers interview also, they will also tell you that most of the questions they are asking from the core areas which you are supposed to deal after the job. So once you become the officer, whether you become assistant provident fund commissioner or you become EPFO, AOEO. In any case, you have to deal with IR, economy, labor law, and accounting. These are the four areas which you have to deal with, right? So you should focus on this area in a very very high manner because it will help you prepare for the interview. आपका interview में questions mostly यहाँ से आने वाले हैं. Technical services में technical questions आते हैं. So you should actually read these four subjects not only from the point of view of the examination that is a written examination but also from the point of view of the interview that is why i am discussing these concept like aapka constitution mein kya provision hai attached office subordinate office kya hai aapka historical evolution kaise hua aapka state ka role kya hai aapka all these questions you know i am dealing not only from the point of view of the writing writing mein to wo pooch sakte hain but simultaneously they can also ask you in the interview okay so you have to prepare for the interview similarly labor law mein accounting mein ye teeno area mein aapko अच्छे से प्रिपेयर करना होगा आर यू विद मी एवरी वन आर यू गेटिंग वट आई एम ट्राइंग टू से यू हैव टू फोकस ऑन द इंटरव्यू ऑल्सो इंटरव्यू ऑल्सो प्लेस ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट रोल यस ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट रोल इंटरव्यू का है और इंटरव्यू में नाइनटी परसेंट रोल ओनली दीज थ्री फोर सब्जेक्ट ओके डिड यू गेट मे पॉइंट वाई यू शुड बी फोकसिंग मोर अपॉन दिस सब्जेक्ट इंटरव्यू में ये बहुत काम आने वाले हैं इंटरव्यू में आप इसको याद करके रट के जाएंगे फैक्चुअल क्वेश्चन दे विल बी आस्किंग फ्रॉम दिस एरिया ओनली पॉलिटी और मे बी जनरल साइंस कंप्यूटर एप्टीट्यूड दैट इज ओनली फॉर द राइटिंग एग्जामिनेशन पर्पस बट इन द रियल जॉब प्रोफाइल यू हैव टू परफॉर्म दीज फंक्शन इंडस्ट्री लेबर लॉ अकाउंटिंग एंड इकोनॉमी ये चार चीजें आपको प्रैक्टिकली आपको डील करनी है आफ्टर बिकम द ऑफिसर आफ्टर बिकम द कमिश्नर right that is why you should focus more upon this area in your preparation so that your 25% area which is exclusively reserved for this 25% area which is exclusively reserved for this that is already taken care of that is automatically taken care of okay so this is the point interview is very important and for interview you have to read these subjects which are highly important in the interview right now after this let us see the historical evolution the historical evolution of ir in india okay and uh, you know there is one more model that we did not discuss in the previous class let me discuss it today one more model so we have discussed various models like we have discussed dunlop model we have discussed marxist model we have discussed socio psychological model trusteeship model okay so do you remember the dunlop model do you remember the dunlop's model anyone who can tell me dunlop's model yaad hai aapko can you tell me the theme of the dunlop model what is the theme of the dunlop's model dunlop model ka theme kya hai can you tell me please try recalling okay dekhiye sirf classes attend karna jaise taise karke course complete karna that is not the real game wo real game nahi hai to real game kya hai sir real game is remembering it reproducing it reading less and reproducing more कम पढ़ना और उसको रिप्रोड्यूस करना एक्यूरेसी मेंटेन करना बिकॉज सिलेबस इज लिमिटेड इफ यू सी सिलेबस फॉर दिस सब्जेक्ट इज लिमिटेड द ओनली थिंग इज दैट यू हैव टू मैक्सिमाइज योर मार्क्स ओके यू हैव टू मैक्सिमाइज योर मार्क्स बाय रिप्रोड्यूसिंग इन ए बेटर मैनर ओके वेरी गुड ओम एंड पूजा चवन वेरी गुड इट इज सिस्टम्स मॉडल रवि तेजा वेरी गुड सिस्टम्स इनपुट प्रोसेस आउटपुट वेरी गुड देन वी डिस्कस्ड मार्क्सिस मॉडल ओके वट इज द की थीम ऑफ द मार्क्सिस मॉडल यू रिमेंबर दैट मार्क्सिस मॉडल का की थीम क्या है वट इज द की थीम ऑफ द मार्क्सिस मॉडल वट इज द की थीम ऑफ द मार्क्सिस मॉडल 
हु विल टेल मी बेसिकली इट इज क्लास कॉन्फ्लिक्ट यस क्लास कॉन्फ्लिक्ट कॉन्फ्लिक्ट बिटवीन द कैपिटल एंड लेबर एंड दे शुड बी कन्फ्रंटेशन फ्रॉम द साइड ऑफ लेबर ओके दे शुड बी कन्फ्रंटेशन फ्रॉम द साइड ऑफ लेबर नाउ स्ट्रक्चरल कंट्राडिक्शन मॉडल बाय हाईमेन स्ट्रक्चरल कंट्राडिक्शन मॉडल बाय हाईमेन वॉट इज दिस मॉडल सो इन दिस मॉडल बेसिकली देर आर टू वेरियंट्स फॉर मार्क्सिस्ट अप्रोच द मार्क्सिस्ट अप्रोच हैज बीन शोन इन टू डिफरेंट वेरियंट सो टू डिफरेंट स्कूल्स ऑफ थॉट आर देयर हु आर डीलिंग विद द मार्क्सिस्ट अप्रोच इन टू डिफरेंट मैनर वन इज द पेसिमिस्टिक व्यू and second is the optimistic view one is the pessimistic view another is the optimistic view okay pessimistic view is given by lenin michels and trotsky pessimistic view is given by lenin michels and trotsky okay so what is the pessimistic view pessimistic view says that workers they are unaware and they are illiterate workers they are unaware and illiterate and they can get protection only if they come with the intellectuals they are supported with the individuals who are intellectuals okay so workers are unaware they are illiterate and they need the support of the intellectual this is the pessimistic view ye kya hai aapka pessimistic view hai this view the pessimistic view is given by lenin michels and trotsky okay lenin michels or trotsky ne ye view diya hai pessimistic view usko hum bolte hain right the another view is the optimistic view optimistic view is given by marx and engels okay optimistic view is given by marx and engels okay so in the optimistic view there are workers okay workers optimistic view says that workers they maintain the working order they do the work also and they can maintain the working order also okay they can go into direct confrontation दे कैन गो इन टू डायरेक्ट कंफ्रंटेशन वर्कर्स जो है वो डायरेक्ट कंफ्रंटेशन कर सकते हैं एंड देर इज ए क्लास स्ट्रगल टू चेंज द सोशो इकोनॉमिक ऑर्डर दे कैन गेट इन टू डायरेक्ट कंफ्रंटेशन एंड दे कैन गेट इन टू क्लास स्ट्रगल टू चेंज द सोशो इकोनॉमिक ऑर्डर सोशो इकोनॉमिक ऑर्डर चेंज करने के लिए क्लास क्लास स्ट्रगल वो कर सकते हैं एंड दे कैन क्रिएट द क्लास लेस सोसाइटी दे कैन क्रिएट द क्लास लेस सोसाइटी so this view is the optimistic view and this is highlighted by the hemen this is highlighted by the hemen okay so this is the this is the optimistic view or this is the view given by hemen the optimistic view of the marxist approach this is structural contradictions model okay structural contradictions model says there are two possible views okay now after this let now let us study the history of ir okay i will share this ppt with you so no don't worry now let us study the history of ir okay the evolution of ir in india so this is the timeline of evolution of ir in india this is the timeline of evolution of ir in india okay so first is the first era we can trace back before world war 1 so before world war 1 there was master servant relation there was master servant relation and most of the employer they used to be the british employers there was master servant relation and most of the uh, employer they used to be the british employers okay because dekhiye india mein jo industries thi they were systematically deindustrialized by the britishers britishers they systematically deindustrialized the indian industries indian industries ko britishers ne systematically deindustrialize kar diya right what is the purpose so that they can make the india as an exporter of raw material and importer of finished goods right so indigenous industries they were destroyed but britishers they started investing in industries like jute cotton right so they were the british employers mostly indigo plantation all these uh, were actually led by the that that they were basically owned by the british employers so british employers were the major players and there was the master servant relationship master servant relationship tha right 
सो वर्ल्ड वॉर वन में दे यू नो बिफोर वर्ल्ड वॉर वन बेसिकली देर वॉज ए एक्ट नॉन एज वायोलेशन ऑफ वर्कर्स कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एक्ट वायोलेशन ऑफ वर्कर्स कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एक्ट वायोलेशन ऑफ वर्कर्स कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एक्ट ये जो एक्ट था दिस एक्ट वॉज ए टूल ऑफ एक्सप्लोटेशन हाउ दिस वॉज ए टूल ऑफ एक्सप्लोटेशन बिकॉज इफ एनी वर्कर इज वायोलेटिंग द एक्ट इफ एनी वर्कर इज वायोलेटिंग द एक्ट देन दिस वर्कर विल बी पनिस्ड ओके अंडर द वायोलेशन ऑफ वर्कर्स कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एक्ट सो इट वॉज द एक्सप्लोटेटिव टूल एंड द पर्पज वॉज टू मैक्सिमाइज द ब्रिटिश इंटरेस्ट द पर्पज ऑफ दिस टूल वॉज टू मैक्सिमाइज द ब्रिटिश इंटरेस्ट ओके एंड इन दिस टाइम ओनली द लेबर मूवमेंट स्टार्टेड द लेबर मूवमेंट स्टार्टेड वी विल स्टडी मोर अबाउट लेबर मूवमेंट इन द नेक्स्ट चैप्टर इन द ट्रेड यूनियन चैप्टर सो वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ लेबर मूवमेंट लेबर मूवमेंट मीन्स वैन द वर्कर्स आर ऑर्गेनाइज वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ लेबर मूवमेंट लेबर मूवमेंट मीन्स वैन वर्कर्स आर ऑर्गेनाइज इन टू वन और दे आर यू नो दे आर ब्रॉट टूगेदर बाय द एक्सटर्नल लीडर्स like social reformers the politicians okay that means there are external leaders not the leader from within the worker they are not the workers from within the labor okay they are not the members of the working class they are the external people for example lokhande okay lokhande happens to be one of the very important labor labor movement leader okay nm lokhande okay he was a social reformer okay satya sodak samaj they also happens to be very important body for the labor movement so labor movement means when the labor is guided labor movement means when the labor is guided by the external leaders the politicians and the other social reformers okay and if it is led by the internal leaders then this is known as trade union movement okay if the leadership is provided by the Uh, the labor itself the leadership is coming from the working class itself if the leadership is coming from the working class itself in that case this is known as trade union movement usko hum kya bolte hain trade union movement bolte hain usko hum log theek hai so we have the we have the uh, history before world war 1 in this time there was labor movement and there was no existence of the trade unions trade unions were not existing at this time and there were mines plantation and jute and cotton textiles mines tha plantation tha jute tha or cotton textile tha mines jute cotton textile plantation these were the major industries now what happened in the world war 1 sir world war 1 mein aisa kya hua that why are we putting it as a mark line why 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 we are putting it like a why we are putting it like a you know line of difference line of difference okay dekhi as the world war 1 was ending as the world war 1 was ending so in this time we had three important events number 1 because of the labor uh, because of the world war 1 because of the world war 1 labor they got the exposure of outside countries they got the exposure of outside countries and they observed that how the labor uh, labor unions the trade unions are working outside india so they they got an idea of the working of labor unions outside india okay just give me a minute let me check the blinking reason
ओके प्लीज मैनेज विथ सम ब्लिंकिंग एंड वी विल अपलोड द वीडियो फ्रॉम द कैमरा ओके सो दैट इन द रिकॉर्डिंग टाइम एट लीस्ट यू विल नॉट फेस दिस प्रॉब्लम द सेम क्लास इज बींग रिकॉर्डेड ऑन द कैमरा सो यू कैन वॉच इट फ्रॉम द रिकॉर्डिंग इफ यू आर फेसिंग द प्रॉब्लम हियर आई अंडरस्टैंड दिस पार्ट ओके सो थ्री मेजर इवेंट्स हैपन थ्री मेजर इवेंट्स हैपन इन द टाइम ऑफ इन दिस पार्टिकुलर टाइम ओके वाट आर थ्री मेजर इवेंट्स फर्स्ट ड्यूरिंग द वर्ल्ड वार वन ड्यूरिंग द वर्ल्ड वार वन द लेबर क्लास गोट एन एक्सपोजर टू द वर्ल्ड दे गोट एन एक्सपोजर टू द वर्ल्ड ओके दैट हाउ द कंडीशन ऑफ द वर्कर इज गुड इन द अदर कंट्रीज नंबर टू इन दिस टाइम ओनली रशियन रेवोल्यूशन वॉज देयर इट रशियन रेवोल्यूशन इट क्रिएटेड ए वर्कर्स रूल इन द यू एस एस आर सो दैट ऑल्सो मोटिवेटेड द वर्कर्स टू डिमांड दियर राइट्स एंड थर्ड द थर्ड रीजन इज द इस्टैब्लिशमेंट ऑफ आई एल ओ ओके इस्टैब्लिशमेंट ऑफ आई एल ओ सो आई एल ओ वॉज इस्टैब्लिश एट दिस पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम आई एल ओ वॉज इस्टैब्लिश एट दिस पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम सो दीज आर द थ्री रीजन ऑफ दीज आर द थ्री रीजन ऑफ वाई दिस एरिया इज इज दिस टाइम इज कंसिडर टू बी द इंपॉर्टेंट लाइन ऑफ डिफरेंस बिटवीन द अर्लियर एंड द लेटर टाइम ओके नाउ वाट आर द इंपॉर्टेंट डेवलपमेंट्स हैपन आफ्टर द आई एल ओ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल देर वॉज ए रॉयल लेबर कमीशन देर आर इंपॉर्टेंट एक्ट लाइक ट्रेड यूनियन एक्ट नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी सिक्स ट्रेड डिस्प्यूट एक्ट नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी नाइन एंड दिस ट्रेड डिस्प्यूट एक्ट नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी नाइन लेटर ऑन दिस वॉज कन्वर्टेड इन टू इंडस्ट्रियल डिस्प्यूट एक्ट देन वी हैड ट्राई पार टाइट एस एल सी आई एल सी ट्राई पार टाइट दैट मीन्स थ्री बॉडीज कमिंग टू स्टैंडिंग लेबर कॉन्फ्रेंस एंड uh indian labor conference okay these bodies also came into play then we had various employer associations employer association means the employees are employers are coming together employer association like in the form of fikki in the form of e efi in the form of aioe okay you don't need to remember the name of these or the year of establishment this question they will not ask you the only thing is that you should know that yes this was the major development okay this was the major development that happened during this time then came 1947 1947 we had industrial truce resolution 1947 so in this time we had industrial truce resolution 1947 okay so industrial truce resolution was an outcome of the tripartite conferences workers management employer uh, workers management and the government they sat together and they gave the they gave the this resolution they came up with the resolution okay and after this after 1947 we had constitution of india fundamental right dpsp that we have already studied then we have various trade union federations okay trade union federations that what is the meaning of trade union federation that means multiple trade unions they are coming together okay. multiple trade unions they are coming together and then we had other platforms like conciliation standing order arbitration these things we will discuss in the chapter number 3 okay and in the five year plan again there were lot of new development or over a period of time with the help of five year plans only the government has made the policy for the labor okay then 1991 was the major watershed 1991 again was the major development 1991 brought the liberalization privatization globalization 1991 brought liberalization privatization and globalization so in 1991 there was liberalization of the tight industrial regulations privatization of the public enterprises and globalization of the indian economy so this gave the major impetus to the various reforms so after this only we started focusing upon the skill development so the five year plans after this they started focusing upon the skill development focus on the social security providing the social security to the employees why because now the companies are getting privatized when they are being privatized that means now they need to get the protection the employees need to get the protection and we have female labor force participation increasing now females are also coming up why they are coming up because number 1 education is increasing for the females number 
इन द सर्विस सेक्टर फीमेल्स प्ले द इंपॉर्टेंट रोल तो पहली बात तो है कि उनके लिए एजुकेशन अपॉर्चुनिटीज इंक्रीज हो रहा है दे इज एन अवेयरनेस अबाउट दियर राइट देर इज ए अवेयरनेस एंड देर इज ए कॉन्शियसनेस दैट दे शुड ऑल्सो गेट द राइट एंड सेकेंडली दे आर ऑल्सो पार्टिसिपेटिंग बिकॉज सर्विस सेक्टर फॉर एग्जाम्पल बैंकिंग सेक्टर हेल्थ सेक्टर एजुकेशन सेक्टर आई टी सेक्टर इन दी सेक्टर्स दी दे कैन प्ले वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल बिकॉज दीज सेक्टर्स आर मोर ऑफ मेंटल वर्क सेक्टर लेट्स ऑफ फिजिकल वर्क सेक्टर सो दे कैन वर्क विद द हेल्प ऑफ मेंटल कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन विद द हेल्प ऑफ व्हाइट कलर जॉब्स विद द हेल्प ऑफ दियर हाई एजुकेशन टेक्निकल एजुकेशन एज ए डॉक्टर एज एन इंजीनियर एज ए चार्ट अकाउंटेंट एज ए मैनेजमेंट पर्सन दे कैन कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट विद द हेल्प ऑफ दियर सर्विस विद द हेल्प ऑफ दियर माइंड विद द हेल्प ऑफ दियर इंटेलेक्चुअल नॉलेज ओके सो लेबर फीमेल लेबर फोर्स पार्टिसिपेशन इंक्रीज ओके सो आफ्टर नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी वन इट देर इज एन हाई इम्पैक्ट ऑफ लिबलाइजेशन प्राइवेटाइजन ग्लोबलाइजेशन ओके ऑल्सो वन मोर थिंग इन नाइनटीन नाइनटी थ्री वन मेजर डेवलपमेंट केम इन द फॉर्म ऑफ वर्कर्स पार्टिसिपेशन इन मैनेजमेंट बिल इन नाइनटीन नाइनटी थ्री वन मेजर डेवलपमेंट केम इन द फॉर्म ऑफ वर्कर्स पार्टिसिपेशन इन मैनेजमेंट बिल सो दिस वॉज ए बिल बिल मीन्स नॉट इंप्लीमेंटेड बट विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस प्रोविजन एटलीस्ट सम सम लाइट वॉज थ्रोन दैट वॉट इज द व्यू ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट रिगार्डिंग हाउ द वर्कर्स शुड पार्टिसिपेट इन द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ द एंटरप्राइजेस सो वर्कर्स पार्टिसिपेशन इन मैनेजमेंट बिल नाइनटीन नाइनटी थ्री इट हैपन टू बी द इंपॉर्टेंट प्रपोजल इट हैज नॉट बीन इंप्लीमेंटेड बट येस डेफिनेटली इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ दिस्ट्री इन द हिस्ट्री ऑफ द आई आर ओके देन न्यू लेबर कोर्ट्स केम इन ट्वेंटी नाइनटीन एंड ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी दीज न्यू बल लेबर कोर्ट्स आर प्रोवाइडिंग द फाउंडेशन न्यू लेबर कोर्ट्स आर प्रोवाइडिंग द फाउंडेशन फॉर द रिफॉर्म्स सो दे आर एक्चुअली कंप्राइजिंग ऑल द इंपॉर्टेंट सेंट्रल लेबर लॉस इन टू फोर कोर्ट्स दे आर डिवाइडिंग दैम इन टू फोर कोर्ट्स एंड देर इज ए इम्पैक्टस ऑन लिबराइजेशन देर इज इम्पैक्टस ऑन रिफॉर्मिंग द इंस्टीट्यूशन सिंप्लीफाइंग दिस फॉर अंडरस्टैंडिंग मिनिमाइजिंग द डिस्प्यूट ओके मर्जिंग द वेरियस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सो दिस इज वॉट हैपन इन टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी एंड दीज आर दट फोर लेबर कोर्ट्स विच आर इन टू पिक्चर ओके so i hope you get an idea about the history of development of the ir i hope you got an idea about the history of development of ir okay so this is the history of development of ir apart from this we shall also see the five year plans what was the focus of the government in the five year plans sir five year plans mein kya focus tha okay what was the focus of the government in the five year plans that is also the important part of the theory or the evolution okay so now we shall discuss fire plans okay any question any doubt please let me know i will share this ppt with you no problem okay i will share this ppt with you now let us see the five year plans the major developments in the five year plans so we have discussed these things already given in your notes as well uh industrial tools resolution and all now let us see plan by plan the important aspects second fire plan second fire plan it aimed for second fire plan
So second five year plan, it aimed at goal of establishing a socialistic pattern of society. ठीक है तो when you study when you study the fire plans in economy second fire plan mein kya hua tha our focus was on the industry we gave the more important role to the industry we gave the more important prominent role to the industry kaise kiya tha isko by giving the new industrial रेजोल्यूशन नाइनटीन फिफ्टी सिक्स सो इंडस्ट्रियल रेजोल्यूशन नाइनटीन फिफ्टी सिक्स केम इंडस्ट्रियल पॉलिसी नाइनटीन फिफ्टी सिक्स केम एंड इन दिस पॉलिसी देर आर टू इंपॉर्टेंट आस्पेक्ट नंबर वन द बेसिक एंड हैवी इंडस्ट्रीज विल बी फोकस्ड मोर पहला फोकस क्या था दिस इज पार्ट ऑफ द इकोनॉमी जो मैं यहां पर डिस्कस कर रहा हूं बेसिक एंड हैवी इंडस्ट्रीज विल बी फोकस्ड मोर ओके बेसिक और हैवी इंडस्ट्रीज को ज्यादा फोकस किया जाएगा सेकेंड सेकेंड क्या होगा दैट पी एस यूज Public sector undertaking, they will get more role. Public sector undertaking will get more role. They will be giving the, they will be given the prominent role. वो ज़्यादा prominent role उनको मिलेगा, right? So this was the focus of second fire plan. So same theme is here also that we want to, we wanted to establish a socialistic pattern of society and we emphasize the concept of industrial democracy. Okay, we focus the industrial democracy. What is the meaning of industrial democracy? That workers should have the right to participate in the management. There should be proper discussion between the workers, the management, and they should also, you know, decide on the important matters. It is not only the employer but also the workers. They should come together and they should decide on the important mat matters. Afar, apart from this, in the next decade, that means after the second plan, in the third and fourth plan, the focus was on the minimum wages, fixation of minimum wages rates. And reduction of inequalities, reduction of inequalities and wage differential. Differential. So minimum wage should be given to the employees because third and fourth fire plan they focused on the equality and equity. That every person in the society they should be given the proper opportunity, right? So fixation of minimum wages, rates, reduction in disparities and the wage differentials. Okay. After this came the fifth fire plan. Fifth fire plan. it focused on better food nutrition health standard higher standard of training and education improvement in the discipline morale and more productive technology and management practices okay so that means we should provide the better food nutrition health standard higher standard of education and training improvement in the discipline and morale more productivity more, more productive technology and the management practices okay so these were the focus of fifth fire plan then came sixth fire plan in the sixth fire plan the focus was more on effective implementation of these enactments okay sixth fire plan may focus was on effective implementation of these enactments and also extending the coverage of the employee state insurance schemes employee provident fund and family pension scheme okay so we wanted to enhance the coverage of insurance and the pension okay so we have to implement the earlier policies in a good manner and we have to uh you know extend the coverage of the insurance and the pension schemes insurance or pension schemes ki coverage ko hame enhance karna tha right insurance or uh, insurance ko hame enhance karna tha right now after this नाइनटीन नाइन्टी वन ओके नाइनटीन नाइन्टी वन आ गया रिफॉर्म्स वाला टाइम आ गया ओके सो दिस वॉज द टाइम ऑफ रिफॉर्म्स द नाइनटीन नाइन्टी वन न्यू इकोनॉमिक पॉलिसी ऑफ नाइनटीन नाइन्टी वन इट हैज कंसोलिडेटेड एंड री इनफोर्स्ड द प्रोसेस ऑफ इंडस्ट्रियल रिस्ट्रक्चरिंग सो दिस वॉज द टाइम ऑफ प्रोसेस दिस वॉज द टाइम ऑफ इंडस्ट्रियल रिस्ट्रक्चरिंग ओके इंडस्ट्रियल रिस्ट्रक्चरिंग में प्राइवेटाइजेशन ग्लोबलाइजेशन एंड लिबलाइजेशन प्राइवेटाइजेशन globalization and liberalization right then came eighth fire plan after the 1991 reforms in this plan the focus was on the improvement of working conditions okay on the welfare and social security measures on the enactment and proper implementation of the labor legislation for the unorganized sector women and child labor okay so improving the working conditions through welfare and social security measures 
through proper labor legislation through focus on the unorganized labor and women and child labor okay so this was the thing this plan focused on the safety of the workers workers education self employment promotion of healthy ir workers participation in decision making as you as you remember that the bill wpm bill 1993 came in this time only okay came in the eighth plan only okay so self employment promotion of healthy industrial relations workers participation in decision making enforcement of labor laws skill formation strengthening and modernization of the employment etc so very high reforms came in this time very high focus was there on the workers concerns improving the working condition providing the social security and then uh, focus on the unorganized worker women and child labor safety education healthy ir labor laws skill formation and modernization of the employment then came the ninth fire plan in the ninth fire plan in the ninth fire plan let us see what was the focus so in the ninth fire plan in the ninth fire plan the focus was on skill formation skill formation and development monitoring of working conditions exchange of information on the job opportunities so employees are provided the information on the job opportunities creation of industrial peace through healthy relations healthy industrial relations insurance against the disease and unemployment okay so skill development good working conditions good job opportunities industrial peace and healthy ir and insurance against the disease and unemployment for the workers and their families so this is the focus of the ninth five year plan ninth five year plan mein ye aapka focus tha after this came the 10th plan in the 10th plan the focus again was on the employment generation welfare okay welfare of unorganized labor elimination of child labor okay to jo focus hamara start hua tha 10th uh, sorry 8th plan mein 8th plan mein we started focusing upon the child labor and unorganized labor same focus has been continued even in the 10th plan 10th plan mein bhi we have the same focus continuing right unorganized labor child labor also right then we have 11th fire plan hamare paas hai fir aata hai hamara 11th fire plan okay so in the 11th fire plan we have again focus on the skill development 11th fire plan ka jo sabse important focus tha wo tha aapka skill development 11th fire plan the most important focus was on the skill development skill development was the most important focus of 11th fire plan and then came the 12th fire plan in the 12th fire plan again skill development participation of the female workers okay and then providing the quality and productive and uh, employment opportunities to the higher productivity industry and service sector okay so 12th fire plan mein aapka focus tha on enhancing the level of demand aligned skills of the labor force raising the female workers participative role by improving the working conditions and creating quality and productive employment opportunities to higher productivity industry and services sectors so this is the 12th fire plan okay so basically they will not ask you like what happened in which plan exactly but you know definitely you should get an idea and uh, they will not ask you very highly factual question that what was the focus in this plan or something but you should get an idea maybe they will ask you certain indirect question which you can answer with the help of this discussion okay so this is basically the five year plan evolution of the ir okay so with this point we complete the chapter number 1 chapter number 1 took some time because this happens to be the important chapter this chapter happens to be the very important chapter this laid down the foundation of the entire uh, discipline next class we will start the trade unions next class mein hum kya start karenge trade unions start karenge the trade union in the trade union basically again the focus will be upon the trade union act basics approaches theories or trade union act okay trade union act happens to be the important provision very very important for the examination okay 
लेबर लॉज में जैब एमेंडम इज कवरिंग अदर लॉज फैक्ट्रीज एक्ट पेमेंट ऑफ वेजिस एक्ट मिनिमम वेजिस एक्ट ऑल दिस एक्ट एंड हियर इन द आई आर इन द इंडस्ट्रियल रिलेशन आई विल कवर टू थिंग्स नंबर वन ट्रेड यूनियन एक्ट एंड नंबर टू इंडस्ट्रियल डिस्प्यूट एक्ट ये दो जो एक्ट है आपका ये मैं कवर करने वाला हूँ और इसकी हेल्प से आई विल गिव यू एन आइडिया हाउ दिस एक्ट वर्क एंड दीज आर द इंपॉर्टेंट एक्ट फॉर द एग्जामिनेशन बहुत अच्छे क्वेश्चन यहाँ से आने वाले हैं ओके इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन प्लीज लेट मी नो सो दैट आई कैन कंप्लीट द क्लास